Good morning, you guys. It's Miss Arneson, and today I'm going to talk to you about thermodynamics, which is a really important area of science. But you're going to get a short introduction. You can study this for your whole life and not know everything about it. It's a really big topic, but we're going to break it down to its most uh, simple parts today. So thermodynamics is a scientific discipline. And if you don't know what the word discipline means in this context, you might be like thinking punishment right now. Well, of course, th thermodynamics is not a punishment of science, okay? So we have another meaning for it. Discipline in this case means that it's an area of study. And so there's scientific disciplines, there's history disciplines, like you might be an expert on something ancient Egypt, for example. That would be your discipline that you study. I have a friend whose discipline is uh, medieval German literature. So these things can get pretty specific. Thermodynamics is actually a really big topic of science. And it has to do with almost everything. So if you've ever taken a science class with me in person, you probably had me talking about the first law of thermodynamics in that class because it's really so important no matter what science you're studying. So what is thermodynamics if we were going to define it? It's the study of heat and energy relationships. So you hear thermo in there, that probably makes you think of temperature like thermometer. And dynamics is the study of how it's moving around. So the reason we have to include heat energy is because honestly, if we break it down, any type of kinetic energy is going to be generating heat because kinetic energy is the energy that's happening right now. It's the energy that's moving right now. And so all of those are going to make friction, and that means that we're going to be generating heat. Chemical energy, gravitational energy, electrical energy, electrical potential energy, and also like elastic energy, those are going to be turning into kinetic energy when we use them. So no matter how you break it down, the energy that we're talking about in science, unless it's just pure stored and never doing anything ever, is going to go back and forth between heat transfers. And that is why this has so many applications. Let's go ahead and look at the laws themselves. The zeroth law comes before the first law. You can remember that because it's like zero, one, two, three. And the zeroth law is all about a concept called equilibrium. Equilibrium is when all the forces acting on an object are equal. And so basically when something is in equilibrium, it is not moving anymore or it's moving minimally. So here's, a, here's an example of that. And I would write down the zeroth law is the law of equilibrium. And then I would also write down what equilibrium means. So equilibrium means the forces acting on something are neutralized or something like that. Of course, the definition is way more technical, but we like to go with a simple one when we're just looking at this from, from a really zoomed out place. Here's an application of this. So this is something you've probably heard of in a forensic show where they're doing an investigation. You can figure out how long ago somebody died by looking at their body temperature, the ambient temperature, that means like room temperature, the temperature around them, the temperature of the outdoors where, they're, where they are. And if you know those two temperatures, you can actually calculate the time since their death. So this is just numbers I made up and put in. But if somebody's body temperature was 71 degrees Fahrenheit and it was 85 degrees in their house, it would mean that they died 36.8 hours ago. So systems, and remember a system is a thing that you're studying, they naturally seek equilibrium. So things want to be in equilibrium. You know this because if you have a cup of tea or coffee or hot chocolate and you put it on on the counter, it will cool until it reaches the room temperature, the ambient temperature, and then it doesn't cool anymore, right? It just stays that temperature unless the room gets really hot again and then the temperature will get warmer because the systems are trying to equal out. So that's the zeroth law, comes before the first law. The first law is the most important one that we study in science class in high school. You have to know this one. The first law of thermodynamics is known as the law of conservation. So you could write down first law of thermodynamics, the law of conservation, and then here's what it means. The total amount of matter and energy stays the same. The total amount of matter and energy stays the same. 
Another way to put this is matter and energy can't be created or destroyed. Remember at the very beginning of this class, which was in term one, we learned about how all the matter and energy that is around now was created at the Big Bang? That's the one exception to this law. But ever since the Big Bang, we have the same matter and energy just going through cycles. And so we say that we have to conserve it. The conservation there means that the amount stays the same. So you might change it, but the amount will stay the same. And a good example of this where you'd study this in class if we could all set up a pendulum experiment would be um, that you start your pendulum and it can't swing forever because some of the energy that is the kinetic energy that is there when it's moving is getting lost to heat. So eventually it will reach equilibrium and it will stop moving. You know this even if you haven't ever set up a pendulum in your house because you've been on a swing. And when you swing, you have to keep putting energy in in order to keep swinging. If you just put your legs out and pull them in like one or two times, you're not going to swing forever because you have to keep putting in energy to keep moving. That, that energy that is potential in you right now, the food you've eaten, gets turned into kinetic energy when you move your legs and get the swing to swing. You also are having friction with the air, and so eventually you would stop swinging if you stopped putting in energy. So you just have to think about all the energy and matter are going to be equal. You can't get rid of it, you can't create it, it just moves from one place to another. Important note about this, you can just, if you want to, say the law of conservation, because remember that matter is just cooled down energy. So since matter and energy can be changed back and forth between each other with that equation E equals MC squared, the law of thermodynamics applies to the stuff and also to the energy all around you. The second law of thermodynamics has two parts and it's probably the one that you really don't need to worry about the most. This one is really pretty complicated compared to the other ones. Uh, but it has two parts, and you can just copy these down because it's not something that you really have to focus on trying to understand. But the, the two parts of it are 100% efficiency is impossible. So no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try to make something efficient, you are always going to lose heat to the environment. So I have this camping man here, because this is the best picture I could find. Um, and he's giving off energy in the form of radiation. Evaporation is actually going to get rid of some heat from his body. Respiration, which is him using the energy that's in his body, gives off heat. And then there's also convection. He's directly, um, he's got energy moving in and out of him in some way. And then he's also got conduction where his booty is touching this rock. So some of the heat is getting pulled out from him into the rock. So a lot of energy gets lost to heat. So you have to always consider, even when you're not doing anything in your house, like you're just laying around watching TV, you're still losing heat to the environment and therefore you're still burning calories, but not very many calories, you guys. You need to get up and exercise because it makes you more healthy. It makes your brain healthy. It makes your body healthy. It's really good for you. The second part of this is just too obvious, like it seems silly to even say. Cold things can't heat things. So like if you have an ice cube, you cannot heat up your glass of water with an ice cube. I know that that's why are we even writing that down as a law, but it is important when you get really technical, so that's why. The last law of thermodynamics is the law of entropy. And in science, entropy means chaos or disorder. This is one of my favorite words in the whole English language, entropy, because it means chaos and disorder, and I don't know. I just love that. This law actually says that as time goes on, things will get more disordered. They will become more chaotic. So this is a model that's trying to show you that. We have this, I don't know, stained glass plate or something, and it's broken, and then as time goes on, these pieces get spread more apart, and then there's more chaos. There's less order. We can see this in dinosaur bones in real life. So if you ever find a dinosaur, which would be cool if you become a paleontologist, 
then you're going to find out that all the bones of the dinosaur are not going to be in order. You're going to have to figure out where things go. So this is, I think, a T-Rex or something very closely related to a T-Rex. And as you can see, this looks like a rib bone. This looks like a leg bone. This looks like part of its tail. And when it died, it was not disordered like this, right? It had all of its bones in the right place. So over time, as this thing has gotten buried and turned into a fossil and had to live through weathering and erosion, it's gotten more and more chaotic. All right, that's basically all you need to know about thermodynamics. Have a good day.